Hello, welcome to What the Flick. We are the law. The three of us. <laughs> I am the law. You are the law. <laughs> we, do, we, we should do the show I'm with the helmets law. where you could only see our mouths <laughs> and then have to guess who is who. Okay. All right, so um, who, who's going to de mm. describe Dread? You are? Uh, I'll describe Please. Dread. Dread is a story about a cop uh, and judge. I'm sorry, a judge. Uh, named Dread. Dread. Named Dread. <laughs> uh, based on the comic book character set in a futuristic city called Mega City One. Can you call it dystopian? Uh, uh, post apocalyptic it, it, dystopia. It's the time to use that uh, word. Based on the popular comic from 2000 AD comics. Uh, it's been made into a movie before. Before there was a 2000 AD, yeah. and that still sounded like the future. Exactly. Uh, based on a British comic, and it was kind of their take on. You know the Punisher. Uh, the Punisher, among other things. Um, Dread is the judge, jury, and executioner, uh, and it's a very violent movie. This is the second remake, or I'm sorry, the second adaptation of the comic, uh, and it's much better than the original. But we should take a look at the trailer. Eight hundred million people living in the ruin of the old world. Fighting for order in the chaos. This is pretty badass. This is shot in 3D and shot with some really spectacular slow motion 3D. Yeah. And they don't go to it too often. They go to it like just enough and they sprinkle it through where uh, you know someone like lifts their arm out of a bathtub and the water looks well, like dime is dripping off of it. And, and, and they, they use the slow motion as part of, of one of the plot lines is that there's this drug right. called slow-mo that makes your brain feel like everything's been slowed down. So they only use the slow motion parts to kind of communicate that someone's on that drug right. and what it feels like. And I think it's very effective. It's not overkill. No. I think yeah. it's a little overkill. You think they do it too I many times? I think it's a little gimmicky. It's cool once or twice, but they do it a few times too many. I don't know. Uh, it, it does look good, I'll grant you that. And I'm a little less sold on this movie than y'all. I didn't hate it, and mm -hmm. I, it's certainly better than the Stallone version. Um, that's not the, hard. It's funny, one, well, one, yeah, I know. Big, that was 15%. That, I looked like, yeah. at 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. One of, the things, one of the things that fans of the comic book hated about the Stallone version was that he didn't wear the helmet very much. Mm -hmm. And in the right. comics, he always has the helmet on. Well, here's one of those be careful where you, what you wish for situations, because Carl Urban wears that helmet the whole movie, and literally you see this much of his No, face. I think that That's was okay. rad. That was a bold uh, move. Yeah. I think that was a very God, bold no. move. He had to act with his mouth. And here's, I mean, not only do the team... He's like, no Linda Lovelace. The way, but <laughs> I think there's you kids a, won't uh, get that reference. <laughs> yes, they will. I, I, Google it. Anyway, I, no, I just I think it really limits him, and and that would be one thing if it were just the mouth only business. But the fact that this movie does not even give a tiny ounce of character for this guy. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't think that was the way to go. I didn't want to have like huge no, backstory no, no. or blah, blah, blah. But no, but they even tease it early on because the, the other judge in the movie that, that he's running around with played by Olivia Thurlby in a super monotonous performance. No, she's good. Oh God, she's Judge terrible. Anderson. Judge Anderson. Anderson. She is a psychic, and at one point she's sort of reading his mind. She goes, I can see something else there, there's, and then she gets interrupted and, and never finishes it. And I thought, okay, well that's setting up something for later. Nope. Nope, we never go back into his head. I never don't need that. anything. No, and I, I like <laughs> I like the way they handled his character. You don't really get the the closest you get to a character arc is kind of the way he deals with whether or not she passed, uh, whether Anderson passed her kind of probationary period. Mm -hmm. That's the closest you get because mm -hmm. really, like he comes off as this as this kind of enigmatic badass, and I think that that's kind of the answer. I think that for, especially if you're familiar with the comics, it's going to really hit the marks that that character needs to hit. Mm -hmm. And they do in this what I think that that should be done with, say, for instance, a Punisher movie. I don't want to see a, a character arc to the Punisher. I want to see him be a character like Dread, where he's kind of this unstoppable force. And if there's any character arc, it's for the sidekick. It's for the Anderson character. Right, and she has one. And because she, has she one. starts out kind of apprehensive and she gains confidence as she makes decisions and fights bad guys right. and kills people. She's the emotional conduit into this world where there is no emotion beyond fear. Right. And the but point of the dread a, But it's such a flat performance. Come no, on. No, I think she's oh, really good. She good. Every movie and, and, and she has these like movie badass movie. Movie. moments with the guy who's their prisoner. I, I liked it. Right, okay. like well, when he's messing with how, you know, when she's reading his mind, mm -hmm. he's messing with, oh, what what, what am I thinking about now? And she gets yeah. fed up with him and smacks him. She's like, now what are you thinking about? Yeah, no, she has fun with it. I did, I mean, there, there, are some, there are some laughs in this movie and there are some, some great violence. I mean, there's some really good shootings in the face and whatnot. <laughs> but did you guys see the Raid Redemption? No. 
Okay. I know it's the same exact movie. It's the yeah. same movie. Yeah. I know, I know, like, I know, I know, I know. It's ten times it's better. It's a high rise. It is. Yeah, but you could say that about SWAT. No, too. no, no, like, no, no, no. Say no. That, you know, are, everybody, like, the, the whole city against there are, them. Like, there are literal shots in this no, movie. That I are know, and, I and I know it's probably that's... coincidence because I'm sure they were both being produced at the same time or whatever. I think so. But I'm just saying, you know, like, look, for all the people who are like, yeah, Hunger Games is just the Battle Royale. The Raid Redemption is this movie times a hundred. But I don't think that that would in any way hamper people's enjoyment of this movie. Or that they have or have not seen the raid. I think well, this is its own okay. thing. Well, and honestly, I'm just like, saying, rather than see Judge Dredd see the raid redemption, mm -hmm. you'll have a better time. I love that. You know, in spite of we getting a reboot, you know, we we see too many reboots and too many sequels. I'm completely down with somebody rebooting a franchise that was done badly the first oh, time sure. yeah, and yeah. fixing it. Right. Because Carl Urban's already talked about doing more Dread movies. And you can see that and happening. I, and I think yeah. that, you know, and amongst the things he's talked about is, you know, a storyline called The Big Lie or where, where we would potentially get a character arc out of Judge Dredd, which I think that could be really cool, where he starts to question everything he does in his very existence. I think that that could be cool. I think for the purposes of this movie and the adventure story and kind of setting up that character and just the story of you know them getting trapped in the building and having to bust their way out, I think that was awesome. Yeah. I really liked it. I now, my only complaint was that I felt like the kind of the carnage got, a, got gratuitous at times. Well, like I, I felt to the point where it's like repetitive, kind of repetitively right. gratuitous. Yeah. I, and, 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 right. and they do that thing where they shoot a gajillion bullets and nobody gets hit, or, <laughs> or the heroes don't get hit anyway. Which in a movie that otherwise seems to be very focused on like this person is shooting this person and like the the, the violence seems very orchestrated and planned to then suddenly have these huge future Gatling guns <laughs> going off and then just like, escaping without a scratch is kind of, it, it suddenly feels like. Hey they're, listen, they're that's no worse than Resident Evil Redemption. Well, uh, yeah, 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 but a lot, but a lot of civilians, blacks. a lot of innocent people living in the squalor of the slum get gunned do, down do, in, in that true. moment. Um, my, my complaint with it is that I find just the, the look of it, it's very, very cool looking. We should mention it. Anthony Dodd Mantle shot this. Oscar oh. winner for Slumdog Millionaire. Um, working in 3D for the first time. It's really cool looking, but like the, the concrete gray sameness becomes mm -hmm. very smothering after a while and very tiresome. And of course it has to be like that. They can't break it up with some like running through, the, through a meadow of lilies. Right. There, is, there is a little bit of that. <laughs> it has to be that. There but, is a little bit where yeah. you feel like they probably cut some corners, you know, production wise to mm -hmm. keep shooting on the same sets. And it does kind of feel like they're running down mm -hmm. the same halls the whole yeah. time. But I didn't dislike it so much that I wouldn't be open to see what they do with this as a franchise. But I don't think this one is as satisfying as it could have been. And I think just and I, I did recently see Raid Redemption. Right. I think it really pales it's fresh. by comparison. Okay, so. let's do numbers. Matt Atchity. Uh Seven. Uh, because again, as I said, I, I mostly like this, but I felt like you know the blood effects actually kind of took away from the story a little bit. When like, like the bullet were, goes into the mouth and then like yeah, the blood like comes it spurting out. Yeah, like it just got a little bit It was yeah. like, it, I, I it's got- cool looking. I, it, I was it was cool looking, but after a while it was like, okay. <laughs> All right, so seven for you. Uh, six and a half. Seven for me, that means our average 6.8. It is higher than that in tomato world. It's in the 80s. It started off really high, yeah. but it's dropped a bit. It's in the 80s right 85%. now. 85%. I don't think you need to be a fan of the comic to go and see no, this no, and no, like no. it, but, but if you are a fan, you're going to be it. very satisfied. You're going to be giddy. All right, um, have fun. <laughs>